Hey guys, John V from Phone Reno. You're watching our video review of the Izon View camera. This is a second generation model. It's uh, the, per the successor to the original Izon remote camera. It's a simple and easy in-home remote camera solution. So basically you could set it anywhere around the house, in your office, living room, and you could see what's going on. It has a a uh, security feature where it can automatically detect motion or noise, record it, and send you notifications. So you could use it for a wide array of different situations. Now, it follows in the design language of its predecessor. It actually doesn't have too much of a change to design. It still has the same cylindrical shape made out of glossy plastic. You know, very lightweight, and for a camera, it's kind of discreet looking. It doesn't look clunky like your ordinary remote access camera. So it's nice, it blends in with all sorts of furniture. It comes with this base here. The base has a magnetic connection. So it snaps into place and it gives the uh, camera a little bit of articulation so you could put it on its sides and the bottom has screws so you could actually wall mount it to the wall or the ceiling so you could technically have the camera upside down but you could also flip the image. Now what's new with this camera compared to its predecessor that now features night vision so it'll be able to see in the dark but besides that same exact feature set and also design. So what we have in the front here is of course the camera lens. It's able to shoot video at VGA resolution, so 640 by 480 at 30 frames per second, but that's the playback rate. When we check out the live stream, it's actually QVGA, so 320 by 240, and it's a choppier frame rate than 30. Below that, you have the microphone here. You have the LED light to indicate its status. And in the back, we just have a uh, reset button right here, manual reset button, and the mini USB port to, cho to power on the unit. The guys on view camera is compatible with both Android and iOS devices. And the setup process is pretty simple. When we first launch the application on our device, it shows us a QR code. We point that towards the camera, and from there, it automatically will set up and connect to our home Wi-Fi network. Now in our experience, we get roughly around a range of 50 feet from our router before it loses any sort of connection. Now this is the app. The main thing that you see when you first launch it is the preview window here. So it gives you a, a, a good preview of what the camera is, is looking at. There's a left pane here that just gives us some additional information about the camera. And we can also set up multiple eyes on view cameras so we could access them at any time. Now, the camera itself has the ability to detect noise and motion, and the cool thing about that is you could set the sensitivity of both. So you could have it less sensitive for noise or even more sensitive if you want. And with motion, there's this neat thing that allows us to select certain areas in the video feed uh, to detect, um, and detect motion. So if the upper left corner senses some sort of motion, we could set it for that so it automatically will start recording. And from there, if it does detect it, it'll obviously record it. Now on the right pane here, we have all our notifications. It shows us everything from motion, sound, and even offline events. We could preview them later on, and generally they have a better, better, better quality. The real-time stream view, though, unfortunately, is kind of choppy, and there's a significant amount of latency. In fact, in our in our experience, at the most, we've seen a 30-second delay, and the video quality itself is kind of poor. A little bit disappointing because you'd think they would have improved the quality by now, but they haven't. It's still a pretty, pretty muddy looking, uh, very indistinct, and colors are a little bit washed out. It's really nice that they do have night vision, so it illuminates even the darkest of areas, but you have that greenish tinge to it. And again, the overall detail quality is kind of poor. And that's the biggest setback to the eyes on camera. It's that for a security camera where you want a pretty, you know, a lot of details, it kind of lacks in that offering. It does a decent job in detecting motion and sound, but if you're trying to view the footage later on, it's not as great as compared to some other cameras. Now it's priced at $100, and for that, it pretty much undercuts some of the other, you know, uh, in-home solutions we've checked out, like the Piper, which is priced at $200. So you definitely save the money, but you do have a big compromise in terms of the feature set and also the overall quality. It's just not good enough for being a security camera. So if you guys want to learn more about the eyes on view, you could check out our website, phonerena.com. John V. Thanks for watching.